Here it is. This is an entire master set of Pokemon's newest release, Twilight Masquerade. And this is a custom-built binder that was made by a member of the fan clan for the fan clan. That's right. One lucky subscriber is going to win this entire master set. And if you want that to be you, here's all you have to do. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and then head over to this video right up here. Leave a like and a comment on that video and then come back on Friday, June 7th, to see if you are the lucky winner of a brand new master set of Twilight Masquerade. Good luck. Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Phantom. Hope you guys are all doing well. Happy Friday. Happy Twilight Masquerade release day. I hope your polls are way better than mine. I still, we're almost 3,000 packs in at this point in time, have not pulled the Hearth Flame Mask Ogre Pond Special Illustration Rare. I have no idea what's going on. I just have the worst luck in the world, apparently. I don't think it takes 3,000 packs to pull it. We've pulled plenty of Special Illustration Rares. We've pulled plenty of duplicates, triplicates. I just can't find that card. I don't know. There's, there's a lot wrong with me, but uh, obviously the inability to pull that specific, that heat mask, that fire mask, uh, that is the, the number one thing that's wrong with me right now. I've got everything broken down, all the pull rate data for Twilight Masquerade, so that way you can make the best decision when it comes to spending your collection dollars. We're going to look over everything. Uh, I want to know how you guys feel about pull rates changing like obviously so pokemon poke beach kind of released the article the other day and pokemon kind of released the numbers about how many cards they printed 11.9 billion that is billion that is with a b that is a lot of a lot of cards that is 11.9 billion cards so you would assume uh obviously we'll have some sword and shield era reprints in that figure so like brilliant stars maybe a little bit of lost origin silver tempest we know those got reprinted probably a little bit of astral radiance a lot of crown zenith crown zenith got printed to the moon uh but that just goes to show you how many scarlet and violet cards uh have been produced how many were printed and obviously with uh, special illustration rares hyper rares being very easy to pull for the first four or five sets in the scarlet and violet generation that scarlet and violet block there's got to be a lot of those out there right but now with nerf pull rates obviously things changed a lot temporal forces uh was the first time where it almost got to the point where a special illustration rare was about equally as rare as an alternate art not an alternate art v max but uh, a good example would be like an umbreon v from evolving skies or a metacham v for evolve from evolving skies uh so now we're looking at pull rates that are much much different and i want to know how you feel about it because it seems like a lot of people are either for it uh, or against it. it doesn't really seem like there's people in the middle who don't really care uh, they're either for it because that makes obviously cards easier to pull but then you lose that chase factor I remember opening up obsidian flames and expecting to open up quite a bit of obsidian flames in order to pull all the chase cards uh, but it was like two cases and then boom you're done with the master set which is insane obviously not happening with twilight masquerade considering the fact that we're almost 3,000 packs deep but we're going to break down all the pull rate data you can let me know in the comment section down below how your pulls have been uh, if you've been lucky if you've been unlucky if you're just searching for a special illustration rare because they seem to have disappeared we opened up uh i, I went through a, a presentation yesterday where i went over 20 booster boxes that we opened up of twilight masquerade and half of them did not include a hyper rare or a special illustration rare. there were two boxes that had both uh so it is possible to get a special illustration rare and a hyper rare, but that used to be the norm where you would get two special illustration rares or you would get at least a special illustration rare and a hyper rare in the same booster box and that continued pretty much all the way up through or up until paradox rift and then things changed a little bit and then changed a lot a bit uh with twilight masquerade but uh half of the boxes that we opened so half of those 20 booster boxes uh nine of them so almost half uh had neither had no special illustration rare no hyper rare one box we opened up only had one full art altogether that was the blood moon ursa luna full art so just the ultra rare not the special illustration rare it was crazy it was terrible uh and that happens bad boxes happen right so it's a lot different than what it used to be i'm gonna stop rambling i'm gonna flip you guys around so we've got everything broken down uh, and I forget the exact sample size we have. It's about 2,400 packs, 2,376, 2,376 packs uh, that we're going to be looking at. Now, I do not think, I'm a firm believer, that all of the rarity cards are printed equally. So every single ultra rare, looking at the top there, you see the Sinistra EX. I believe there is as many of those in existence uh, as there are Perrin. I believe there are the same amount of full arts in existence. There's not like a unique 
a uh, specific card that print is printed less. Uh, I think that by rarity, based off of rarity, uh, all cards are printed the same. They're printed on sheets. They cut down. We've seen this process before. Uh, so I don't think that this is a good sample size as far as breaking down specific cards as far as rarity goes, but I think that's okay because uh, we assume uh, that there's going to be as many Sinistra EXs as there are Blood Moon Ursa Luna EXs for the, that double rare category. We think there's going to be as many printed. There's not a unique card that it's more rare uh, than another card. Uh, Pokemon doesn't do anything like numbering or anything like that when it comes to an actual set release. So I think that there's going to be an equal amount that were printed. There's not really a whole lot of outliers either uh, as far as batching goes and things like that. Batching did seem to be a thing. Uh, I talked earlier about uh, the lack of reverse hollow Zapdoses that I couldn't find anywhere. Obviously, batching seems a little weird when you haven't pulled a Hearth Flame, corner, uh, Hearth Flame uh, Ogre Pond as of yet, which we haven't, almost 3,000 packs in. Very, very strange. Uh, but for the most part, I think that this is a good sample size as far as uh, what you can expect to get out of your booster box. If you go out and you buy a booster box, you should get roughly uh, the pull rates that we're going to be looking at here. We're going to start out looking at the singles and just break those down just to look at any outliers that might be out there. And for the most part, regular arts, if we're looking at regular arts to start out, uh, this uh, double rare category, uh, you can see we pulled 31 Sinistra EXs. That's a pull rate of one out of every 77. Pretty much every single regular art that we pulled, all of them very close to equal as far as rarity goes with the exception of the iron thorns ex that one was a little bit more difficult for us to pull again more of a batching thing i don't think it has anything to do with iron thorns being more rare of a card if anything you would think the dragapult would be the most rare out of all of them uh, and that's why i really don't think that there's any unique cards uh, as far as this rarity category goes that was printed more or less than one another uh, but the iron thorns ex takes about 103 packs for us to pull it we pulled 23 of them out of that uh, 2376 pack sample size uh, some of the ones that we pulled more more of were like the Meg Cargo EX. We pulled 35 of the Screamtail EXs. That's one out of every 68. We pulled 36 of the Wellspring Mask Ogre Pond. That's one out of every 66 packs. That's the one that we pulled the most of. The Dragapult EX, I was already looking at uh, prices this morning. It's very interesting to look at TCG Player opening weekend of a new set just to kind of see what happens. And once again, I did take pictures of how everything was performing this morning so that we can, we can get a good understanding of how the market performs uh, opening weekend because you see some severe drops opening weekend and I think a good barometer of the set is to see how much a card drops over the weekend. That really tells you what kind of legs it has and what kind of performance it has. Dragapult, for example, dropped all the way down to about $13, $14. So this card got hit extremely hard. I have been testing a little bit of it. I built a deck last night. I haven't had a whole lot of time uh, to play or to test, uh, but it does seem like it's very, very heavy on draw support. It does seem very reliant. It can brick on itself. There's a lot of tweaks that need to be worked out. I think it can be good uh, but somebody's got to figure out how to play it. Right now, I don't think anybody's really figured out how to play it yet, which is understandable. It's still very, very early. Obviously, we won't see it fully in action until NAIC uh, in a few weeks, and then obviously it could it could tear it up over there. But uh, we pulled 28 Dragapults, one out of every 85 packs. So that's pretty much smack dab in the middle, a little bit closer to the lower end as far as the amount of, uh, amount of Dragapults that we pulled, but still a fair amount, a decent amount. If we look at A specs, again, not a whole lot of outliers in here. The one that we pulled the least of uh, was the Hyper Aroma. We only pulled 17 of those, which is one out of every 140 packs. And the one that we pulled the most of uh, was the Legacy Energy, which is not necessarily the one that you want to pull, but not a bad one to pull either. So we pulled 26 of those, which is one out of every 91 packs. The big one, uh, Unfair Stamp, that's the most expensive. It's nowhere near the price point of what Prime Catcher is. Prime Catcher is still the A spec uh, that most decks are going to play, but Unfair Stamp is very very strong. Same thing with Scoop Up Cyclone. That could be a big thing moving on. We pulled 20 of those, but Unfair Stamp, we pulled 19. So right around, uh, closer to the lower end uh, than the higher end, but we still pulled 19, one out of every 125 packs. There is one less ace spec in this set than there was in Temporal Forces. There were seven in Temporal Forces where we only get six uh, in Twilight Masquerade. So pull rates are going to be adjusted a little bit because of that, because of that variance factor. The Illustration Rares, this is where it's at for this set. At least in my opinion, the Illustration Rares are absolutely phenomenal. I think up uh, top to bottom, up and down, like there's really not a bad one in this set. I think they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, especially the best, the best uh, illustration rare 
category we've had pretty much throughout the entire Scarlet and Violet. You could argue Paldea Evolve, which was also very good, uh, but this set just is absolutely slapping. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, so we pulled seven Pinsir. We pulled seven Swablu. Uh, those are a little bit closer to the lower end. One out of every 339 packs. Uh, we pulled 13 Diplin, uh, which isn't bad. Poltergeist, we pulled 10. Six Torkoal, uh, which is one out of every 396 packs. That's still not the one that we pulled the least of. Ten Infernape. Infernape, one of my favorites in the set. Frostlass, we pulled ten of. Only five Fion, which is a little bit interesting. Five uh, Fion, a little bit on the lower end compared to the rest of the illustration rares that we pulled. Uh, we pulled ten Cramorant. We pulled twelve Helio Heliolisk. Uh, nine Watchroll. Eleven Chimeco. Twelve Enamorous. Seven Hisuian Growlithe. That's my favorite one in the set, especially the picture that it makes with the Perrin. Uh, very, very cool. The Tatsuguri, we pulled twelve of, which isn't a bad one to pull extras of. Uh, the Chansey, we pulled ten of. And even the Eevee, we ended up pulling 11 of the EV. That's the most expensive. It did drop a little bit, uh, but still selling for around $40, which is very, very impressive. Uh, obviously, that's going to be the chase for a lot of people in the set. And then the Sunflora, uh, we pulled seven of those. If we go up to the ultra rare category, or just if you want to call them full arts like I do, uh, the, the full art category, uh, the Sinistras, we pulled 13 of those. We pulled five of the Teal Mask, Ogre Pond, EX. That's one out of every 475 packs to make cargo. There's a lot of the funny hats in this set. Uh, and it's not a huge differential when it comes to the Ogre Ponds. I was hoping the uh, special illustration or the SIR Ogre Ponds would have a little bit more of a kick in person. Uh, unfortunately, didn't. Don't, I don't really grasp it. It's still a good set. Uh, I just wish they would have done a little bit more with the Ogre Ponds. Or at least not made, uh, just don't make the, the, the Terra uh, Ogre Ponds in the full art category, in the uh, ultra rare category. I just wish they wouldn't have done that. Uh, Luxray EX, we pulled six of. We pulled 12 of the Wellspring Mask. That was the one that we pulled the second most of. Sinister ended up being the one that we pulled the most of. We pulled 13 of those, one out of every 183 packs. It looks like the Greninja EX, which is also a Terra Pokemon. So the Greninja EX and uh, the Dragapult EX, uh, those are both Terra Pokemon as well. The Greninja one, we only pulled four of. So that's the one that we pulled the least of. The Dragapult is the one that you want. We only pulled seven of those. Uh, Full Art Blissey, we pulled eight of. The Ursa Luna, uh, we pulled eight of. Only five Full Art Caretakers. Uh, 11 Carmines, which isn't too bad. One out of every 216 packs on that one. Seven Hassle, eight Kieran, five Lucian, and seven Perrin. Uh, not too bad on that one. Here's the special illustration rare category right here. As you can see, there's an error on one of them because we still have not pulled uh, the Fire Mask Ogre Pond, the Hearth Flame Mask uh, Ogre Pond SIR. Still haven't pulled it. it, it crazy to me. Absolutely crazy. Uh, Sinistro, we ended up pulling four of. Uh, that was the one. There was a few of them that we pulled four of. So we pulled four of the Sinistro. We pulled four of the Greninja, which isn't bad at all. Four of the Blood Moon Ursaluna. Four of the Carmine. Four of the Kirin. Uh, we pulled five of the Lana's Aid. That's the one that we pulled the most of. Two Teal Mask, three Wellspring, two Cornerstone Mask, uh, three Perrin, uh, then zero, zero of the Heat Mask. I just don't, I don't know why. It's just crazy, crazy to me. Uh, so overall, we pulled plenty of special illustration rares, and for the most part, very close in number, but just terrible luck. Couldn't pull a Hearth Flame Mask Ogre Pond uh, to save our life. When it comes to the actual Hyper Rares, the Gold Cards, the one that we pulled the least is the one that you want the most, uh, the Buddy Buddy Poffin. We only pulled two of those, uh, which is a pull rate of uh, about 1,188 packs. We pulled four Teal Mask. We pulled four uh, Blood Moon Ursa Luna. We pulled four Enhanced Hammer. We pulled four Luminous Energy. And then three Rescue Boards, so only two Buddy Buddy Poffin. So how does this all break down? We're going to look at the numbers here. So overall, we opened up 2,376 packs of Twilight Masquerade. 66 booster boxes that were open. Your average hits per box is actually up a little bit. You're looking at 14.5 hits per booster box. Now, we did have some booster boxes that only had 11 hits or 12 hits. But if you remember watching that first case that we opened up, we recorded a video uh, about a week and a half ago opening up an entire case. Uh, it seems like 14, 15 hits is pretty much the norm. That's where that's the sweet spot. Spot. Your box is probably going to have 14 hits. It might have 15 hits. Uh, you could have worse. It could have 11 or 12 hits, but you could also have uh, 16. I think there was even a box where we pulled 17 hits. Some of these boxes feel very, very loaded, uh, especially when you come when it comes to the double rare category, that regular art, uh, because you're pulling so many of those in a booster box. It seems absolutely busted. Uh, you're pulling one out of every six packs when it comes to those regular arts, those double rares, so a Dragapult or a Wellspring Mask or a Blissey or a Sinistra, those regular 
regular art Pokemon. 6.24 per booster box, which is the highest uh, I think we have ever been at. You used to get, uh, in the early days of Sword and Shield, from basically Sword and Shield base all the way up to the Trainer Gallery set, so all the way up to Fusion Strike, you would get about 7 to 8 hits total per booster box. That would include your full arts, that would include your VMAXs, that would include uh, your Rainbow Rares and your Gold Cards, but now you're getting almost 7 regular arts just in a booster box by itself, uh, which is absolutely insane. One out of every six uh, booster packs. A spec's a little bit down. Again, we are missing one in this set compared to the last set, so that does make sense. 1.91 per box. You're probably going to get two in your booster box, but there is an off chance that you might get one. Very rarely will you get more than two. We did have some boxes where you got three. We had one box uh, as we recorded uh, where we got four, which was very, very strange. Average ultra rares, those full arts, uh, you're looking at 2.42 per booster box, uh, which is one out of every 15 packs. Average illustration rares, a little bit higher, 3.11. Uh, which is uh, not bad at all. You're, you're probably going to get three. Uh, you might get two, but you also might get four, which brings that average up a little bit more. Uh, one out of every 12 packs. And then when it comes to the special illustration uh just barely better than what we saw with Temporal Forces. Very similar, 0.53, one out of every 68 packs. I think we were lucky with the amount of special illustrations that we did end up pulling. Uh, however, uh, still have not found that that one fire mask, which is absolutely crazy. One out of every 68 packs, which is a little bit better than what you would get. Alternate arts from the Sword and Shield blocks. Uh, Sword and Shield Black was about one out of every every three boxes. One out of every 95-ish packs. Uh, so this is a little bit better than that. One out of every 68. Hyper Rare is still very, very difficult. Those are the most, most difficult to pull. Uh, point 3-2 per booster box, which is one out of every 113 packs. Very similar to what we saw uh, from Temporal Forces. You can see 6.08 was the average double rares in Temporal Forces. A little bit better on the A specs because there was that one extra. About the same on Ultra Rares. A little bit worse on Illustration Rares. A little bit worse on Special Illustration Rares. And a little bit worse on Hyper Rares. So you do get a little bit more bang for your buck in Twilight Masquerade, at least from the sample size that we opened up. Obviously luck plays a factor, so these numbers are probably too close to really pay a difference. I think we just got a little bit luckier with the amount of amount of pulls and maybe just a little bit unluckier uh, with Temporal Forces. But if you look at how different things are, uh, you get almost a full extra double rare in Temporal Forces and in Twilight Masquerade than what you did in Paradox Rift uh, where you got 5.41 per booster box instead. And the big number that's changed is that special illustration rare and that hyper rare category. It was one out of every 47 packs for a special illustration rare. Almost one per booster box and then hyper rare is about one per two booster boxes so it often happened where you got at least one per booster box either a special illustration rare or a hyper rare. and that was actually down a little bit uh from previous sets from obsidian flames uh from Pelde evolve from scarlet and violet base where you got basically one of each or two special illustration rares you would get uh at least one in a booster box for those first few sets of scarlet and violet so pokemon definitely changed things uh and we are looking at completely different pull rate numbers right now uh but still not bad. You still get a lot of hits, which is really fun. It's fun opening packs, obviously, to get hits. But if you're chasing special illustration rares, hyper rares, obviously, wait a couple of months. Look at what the market does, uh, because I do think that a lot of these cards are going to come down in price, especially after more and more product has been opened. Once we get through NAIC, uh, and there's really no major events except for the World Championships, which are in August, and then you have you know September, October, where regionals kind of start back up. There's going to be a little bit of lull in the market when it comes to chasing cards and things like that. So that's really kind of the time where you want to start paying attention to some of those uh, special illustration rares, some of those hyper rares that you kind of want to add to your to your collection that maybe fill out fill out master sets and things like that. So uh, definitely worse than where we've been, but very similar to what we saw with Temporal Forces. Uh, you can let me know, like I said, in the comment section down below, how things have been going for you guys, uh, what you've been pulling so far, what your first impressions are of the set. It is a fun set to open. The illustration rares are, are great, um, but still very, very difficult to pull some of those higher uh, echelon rarity cards like the special illustration rares and the hyper rares. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. Until next time, uh, peace.